So if you bought this cedar chest in 1949, you were entitled to a three-year moth damage guarantee. Pay you $250 for any damage. That seems like a pretty good deal. So I've given this a lot of thought. And because this veneer is so thin and so damaged, I'm very hesitant to do much uh, sanding on it. I just think it'll it'll uh, destroy it even worse than it is. So what I have done is just real lightly sanded the rough areas, the roughest areas, and even have some bubbling up of the veneer in places. What I'm going to try to do is, is restore some color back to the original veneer. And this is a lot of, a lot of walnut looking color strips in it. And then some lighter uh, kind of early American looking uh, strips. This looks like a, a bird's eye maple, uh, maybe a veneer in this area. And so some of these areas that are lighter, I'll just use a, a natural stain, which just has more of a, a yellowish cast to it to try to restore some of the scratches in these areas. But I'm not gonna do much to the, to the structure of this veneer just for fear of, of messing it up uh, worse than it is. And I figure if I can get some color back uh, by, by staining these areas again, then I can uh, spray uh, or brush on polycrylics, what I think I'm gonna use for a finish on this, uh, a Minwax product, but I'll, I'll use it to just build back a little bit of a, of a finished surface on it and try to get some of the roughness taken away with the building up of, uh, of the finish. And then I'll lightly sand that and coat it again. And that's probably the best I'm going to be able to do with something like this. If it were solid hardwood, it would be a different story. There is a little artist in all of us. I really do wonder sometimes how many woodworkers have also had their hands in painting or music or sculpting at some point in their past or continue doing artistic things along with woodworking. I guess the point I'm making is that creating with your hands is artistic, whether it's with an instrument or, in this case, a paintbrush and a can of stain. The thing that bothered me about jumping into this project was all the areas that are so bleached out. I wasn't quite sure as to how these things happened, nor was I confident about what was going to happen when I started applying stain to these areas. That's why I pretty much just hit it with a stain with very little preparation otherwise. I knew that if the stain went in well, I was home free because I could build up finish on top of the surface after that. And that would hide a lot of the scarring with each additional coat of finish. This is early American stain, which it used to be called American Walnut years ago, this basic color. But it's a little lighter version of what I just used, which was a, a provincial stain. It has a little bit uh, darker brown in it, and this has a little bit more red. So far the stain is doing what I hoped it would and the veneer is just soaking it up like a sponge. Because the veneer is almost splintering in some places, I'm flooding those spots to try to saturate the wood fibers. As long as I can get the color to be consistent throughout the veneer, I know that I can deal with the roughness of the surface by building multiple coats of finish over the top. Now this is just the natural stain. It's not going to really change this color much. It's just going to soak into the scratches. Hopefully give us a much smoother finish. A little deeper color. What I'm not sure about are areas like this. It's probably caused from water resting on the surface and then further deterioration of the finish over time. But I mean this piece is about 70 years old and was used in the household of a friend I grew up with. He told me he and his brother stored toys in the chest. There were family coin collections that were kept in there as well. So it was regularly open and closed and used routinely on a daily basis by the family. I'm starting each new section with the dark provincial stain and I apply that stain to the obvious dark streaks in the veneer that I can see and in other areas where I can't see the underlying color, I take a guess as to where it looks like the grain direction would be heading. I then paint in between the dark streaks with the early American stain, and that works quite well to blend the whole area together. I use the natural stain last to coat the light areas. 
I know very little about the furniture building processes of the 1940s, but I think it's a safe assumption that this was handcrafted. I don't think this was a high-end piece of furniture, but generally speaking, it is well built with good materials. I can't tell if they did the same thing I'm doing to get the kind of contrast there is between the different woods and the veneer, but maybe they did. Anyway, on the sides and front, where the damage is more from age, I opted to use the middle stain color, Early American, across all those surfaces and got good results as well. I have one more process to touch up a few more areas on the top, then I'll apply a coat of finish as a sanding sealer before building up the final finish coats. I have a couple of spots where it looks like the original veneer has been just completely destroyed by something that bleached out uh, everything out of the, uh, the veneer and I'm not able to get it to take stain anywhere either. So what I do in situations like this is take acrylic paint and then try to brush in some color over these spots just to cover and this is underneath the ultimate finish so it'll end up being blended in. I've sprayed one light coat of uh, finish on and I'm going to continue building multiple coats to try to just get rid of some of the distortion that's in the in the surface of, of this veneer that's happened just with the it's aging. I'm just real lightly sanding the the first coat. First coat of finish on new wood and in this case on old weathered hardwood veneer will tend to raise the grain a little and by taking a quarter sheet of 220 grit sandpaper that roughness can be knocked back down. With each new coat of finish that becomes less of a problem and the surface gets smoother. When spraying finishes on vertical surfaces like this the main concern is to not spray so much finish that you get runs developing in it before it gets a chance to dry. On this chest I ended up spraying four coats which gave me the flexibility to spray lighter coats on the sides and front and still get a nice finish in the end. On flat surfaces like the top, you're safe to go with heavier coats. Plus, since the top is going to get more use than the sides, it's a good idea to have heavier coats there. Although this looks like a gloss finish when it's wet, it mellows out when it dries. It's actually a satin finish. Anyway, a fun and interesting project. If you have old furniture in your family, don't get rid of it without at least giving some thought to refinishing it. There might be something pretty special underneath it. Thanks for looking in on Dobbs Workshop. You know there's always something going on, so check back every week or so.